Hey y'all, it's me Alex. Today I have an advent makeup tutorial because, you know, like it's a holiday season and I get that, but if there's one thing I'm a stickler for, it's the liturgical calendar. But no, it's also, I will do a proper like Christmas red and green, funky, bright eyeshadow tutorial, makeup tutorial. But honestly, I prefer advent colors on myself. And just like in general and I feel like everyone does a Christmas holiday makeup look and I want to celebrate the season coming up into it it's also because I work at a church and <laughs> uh, I'm just inundated with all of that stuff this is how it turns out I'll show you how to get to it so uh, I have to go to work so that's enough of an introduction let's just get on into the tutorial so to start off the tutorial <laughs> God, I'm not used to talking in front of a camera again. So to start off the tutorial, uh, I always start with my eyes first, especially when I am using some brightly colored eyeshadow because I'm a heathen who digs into their eyeshadow really deeply. And so there's always a lot of fallout. Yes, I could tap my brush in between uh, digging into my eyeshadow and putting it on my eyes, but a uh, forethought, we don't know her. So. Starting with my eyes, since I wanted to get into all of my base stuff, uh, I am going to use my NYX HD eyeshadow primer. For those of you who are new here, I mention this in every video in case there's anyone new. Uh, this is my holy grail eyeshadow primer. It is the greatest thing in existence. If you want to buy the Urban Decay Primer Potion, but you do not want to pay for the Urban Decay Primer Potion, buy this instead. It is like $7 less money, so it's better. For Advent, some people lean towards blue, some people lean towards purple. I personally come from a background where I'm used to the purple advent colors, but I'm going to work today and the church that I currently work at is a blue advent church. Um, I personally prefer purple because it's what I grew up with and also I think that purple is like the best color and it looks really great on me so I'm gonna go with purple but like a blurple, a bluey purple, a blurple. So I'm gonna use my Menagerie Cosmetics Violet Ink, Violet Ink palette. I said Violet Ink and no. Like I know Peace Sunday was not this upcoming Sunday, but you know, I don't want to get demonetized for using a violent ink palette. I'm going to use the e.l.f. and J. Kissa J3 brush because that is always like the best brush to start off anything with if you're doing any sort of like big ol' eyeshadow look. And I'm going to begin with Jellyfish up here and I'm going to put that down as my transition shade. Menagerie, Menagerie, whatever, however you pronounce it. Um, their eyeshadows tend to be very pigmented and very bright, so I like to sort of layer them up in order to make them blend better. So while I think that you probably could put down one of the deeper shades that we're working towards first, I don't like doing that because I think that this is just a little bit easier to blend. As you can see, this is a light kind of pastel-y shade, but it is very, very pigmented. I don't think that they have this palette anymore. I'm pretty certain this one is discontinued, which is really sad because this is definitely um, my favorite palette from them and I'm not super into some of the color stories of their like newer ones. And that's sad because I used to really like this brand. They just really haven't put anything out that's appealed to me in a while, so. I'm gonna use this brush from the Melt and Beetlejuice collection and I'm going to take the shade Octopi right here. Um, and for some reason, my brain just said Octopi Wall Street. I'm not gonna talk too much about that. By the way, the way I was doing the transition shade is because this is a halo eye, so I wanted to put it in the inner and outer corner and connect it in the crease. And that's kind of the color theory that I'm going to be working with for all of these shadows. So I'm gonna do the same with Octopi, but on this smaller brush, so that way it's a little bit more precise, so it's not like quite as fluffy and blended out as the first shade. So I'm gonna begin that at the outer corner there and layering it on top. And you can already see by the fact that I put down the first shade that this is already kind of blending into it pretty well. So put that on the inner corner as well. There we go. 
And you see how that's sort of like a bluey purple. So no matter your advent preferences, I think that this is a look that can work for you. So we'll do the same thing on the other eye, or at least I will. You can do what you want. Don't follow my instructions, see what happens. Okay, now this one, I think I put a little too much on the center. So I'm just going to take the previous brush and just take that over the edges. I'm not putting any more of either shadow on there. And this just kind of helps to smooth out the edges a little bit, make it how we need it to be. See, that's nice. And then on the Elfin J Kissa J4 brush, I'm going to use a teeny tiny bit of inkjet. I'm not going to make this a main color kind of like I have for jellyfish and octopi. I really like to have there be like a lot of contrast when it comes to my halo eyes to make sure like the shimmer in the middle shows up how I want it to, et cetera, et cetera. I just sort of like to give it all the opportunities it can. So if I can, I literally am just tapping in my brush like once into the shadow and I'm putting it at the outer and inner corner. And you can see that gives it a little bit more depth there. And you just want to make it roughly the same on both sides, you know? Um, and you see we're leaving that little like patch of skin in the middle for the eyes. So now I think we're good in terms of getting our base down. This provides just like the shape that I want for my halo eye. So now, because I like to make sure that whatever shimmer I use in a look like this just really, really pops, I'm going to use the NYX glitter glue here. I literally just like put a little bit on the back of my hand like that. And then I just like to take a little brush like this. You see how that's like flat there, but it's also small so I can get precise because I have, a, I think I have like a decent amount of lid space, but you know, it can get a little touch and go here and there. Uh, I'm going to just take that and kind of cut my crease a little bit and start it up here and bring it down to my lash line with, and basically use it to cover up the part that is still like skin showing and there's no shadow on. And then I kind of do some windshield wiper motions to blend it just over the purple shadow that is already there. So I'm gonna do it on this side too. I'm not gonna use either of the shimmers from this palette simply because I know I have a couple of like bluey purple like duochrome multi-chrome type shadows so the shade that i want to use is moon tide here from terra moons cosmetics i'm gonna try and like there you go you can kind of see the shift there it's there's a bit of a blue shift that you can see in person that isn't picking up well on camera but i think that'll be kind of our best bet i didn't want to go with anything too dark just because this is a this is like a mid-tone sort of purple look. And for the brush I'm going to use, it'll be the Elf and J Kissa J1 brush since it's like kind of flat-ish. It's still a little fluffy, so it'll help me pack it on, but it's like just flat enough that it'll also get the precision that I need. So I just start it up at the top where I made that harsh line and kind of cut my crease a little bit. I bring it down onto my lid like that and uh, kind of blend it to the side in the same windshield wiper motion that I used to apply the glitter glue in the first place. Yeah, that's kind of how you do that. That was easy enough. I think Terra Moons has some pretty pigmented shadows so that wasn't you know, super hard. So I'm gonna go back in with more of inkjet here on not that brush, that's not the brush I used. On this brush here, and I'm just going to use that to tap along the outer and inner corner where I put the uh, shimmer shade down, just to make sure that the, that like while I have it in a cut crease sort of look on my lid, uh, it's still blended at the corners. And that way, it, you know, you can see 
where the shimmer starts and the matte begin shimmer starts matte begins whatever now i'm going to go in for the lower lash and i'm going to take octopi here and i'm using that same brush that i did on my lid and i'm literally just bringing it along my lower lash line And then I'm just going to use a teeny weeny bit of jellyfish on the Elf and J Kiss J2 brush, which is sort of like a flat and fluffy brush. I'm just taking that on the very tip of it and using that to blend out my lower lash line. So basically that it just kind of matches what I have uh, going on in the crease. Because, you know, I would like to make this appropriate for all parts of the Advent season, not just on the purpley blue Sundays. I'm going to use this light pink here as my inner corner highlight from, and this is from the Kaleidos Lunar Lavender palette. It's like a light purpley pink. I was going to do some like wing liner with it, but honestly, I don't feel like this look needs it. I just want this to shine through and look nice. So not gonna do that. And good news, I found my Melton Beetlejuice lash curler. I found an entire makeup bag uh, that I gotten lost in the shuffle. So I'm gonna curl my lashes. And then I'm going to use my Urban Decay Perversion mascara that I'm almost out of. I need to buy some more, um, but I really like this. I feel like it's just like a good all around mascara. I also feel like this look would look really good if you're like a false lash person to put some of like some fluffy sort of lashes, not like the ones that are all the same length, but some like fluffy wispy ones, like kind of dramatic, but not the ones that like cover up your eye or anything like that but you know i think that that would be cute since i'm going into work today i'm not going to do too much face makeup since i'm going to be wearing a mask all the time uh but i'll show you what my current routine sort of is if you've watched my channel before you will probably be able to guess but each tutorial i do i know that there's a chance of like new people being here so i want to always be like sharing what i do in case anyone is curious about anything which, by the way, I should mention, for my brows, I use the shade Jungle out of Jupiter Jungle, and that's what I put in my brows to make it match my hair. I'm using my NYX Bear With Me Tinted Skin Veil. This looks messed up because it is, and that's just going to be my base because it always is. I have the Lip Bar Tinted Moisturizer as well, which I like, um, but unfortunately, the lightest shade there is a little bit too dark for me in the winter when I'm not going outside as much. Even though I think it blends pretty nicely, I would rather have something that's a wee bit closer to my skin tone. Now, I have heard that this one has been discontinued. I haven't, like, because I feel like I'm pretty well stocked when it comes to my tinted moisturizers at the moment. I just haven't, like, properly looked. So I can't tell you for sure, but if it is, 2022 is going to be the year that I try out a lot of tinted moisturizers in the name of finding a new one. Because this is my holy grail, but as with that eyeshadow palette, the Violet Ink palette, um, it seems like everything I love just gets discontinued. I have the Samantha Ravindahl curse. Yeah, so that's my base. It just, I don't like wearing too heavy of a base because like... I don't know, I would rather have fun with skincare rather than my base product, but I like to put a little something down that way, you know, whatever makeup I put on top has a wee bit more to grab onto. So now I'm going to use the Noon Face Palette from Midas Cosmetics, their collaboration with Neon MUA. I love this stuff so much. This is probably like product of the year for me. I know it came out last year, but I bought it this year. So I'm going to take this Real Techniques Expert Face Brush dip that into the contour shade uh, just very lightly because the contour and bronzer shades in this palette are very, very pigmented. And while I'm very good at working with pigmented eyeshadows, pigmented face products still have a little bit of a learning curve. I've gotten better, but not 100% there. So I kind of just take it very gently, like you can see how little product I have on there. And I just gently take it like right where 
my cheekbone is or at least like where the shadow of my cheekbone is you can tell that by like like following that up there i try not to take the contour shade any further down than like where my brow bone is because i feel like that's not super flattering on my face shape so that's kind of all i do when it comes to contour because i don't feel like you know, if I do my chin or anything, I don't think that that's going to like look good. I don't want to contour my nose because that's a lot of effort. So I'm going to take now the bronzer here and this is on an e.l.f. blush brush. This is one of their $3 brushes that is falling apart. And then once again, take it very, very lightly and I just blend the ever loving crap out of it. I put it ever so slightly higher than the contour shade and I bring it down a little bit more. Um, I always try and start it towards the back and then blend it down a little bit just because that helps make it look more natural and blend a little bit better and people won't notice if you screw it up and put too much pigment closer to your hairline than if it's like right in the middle of your face. So and then I just kind of put it across my nose because that's where when I go outside on the rare occasion that I do the light will hit me and then up towards my hairline I would do it on the other side but I have bangs for the sole purpose of me not having to put quite as much effort into my makeup okay now we're getting down to the fun part highlight you can see I've made a dent in this so I'm taking the Real Techniques setting brush which is my cat Goose's favorite makeup brush because when he hangs out with me while I do my makeup, he always specifically tries to play with this brush. So I'm just taking this on the tops of my cheekbones. I try not to bring it down more than like here-ish. Once again, I just want it to look like natural and like actually work um, for my face shape. Make myself look nice and glowy. Um, I'll bring it down the bridge of my nose. Sometimes I'll do a little Rudolph tip. And you know what? It's the holiday season, so why not? And a little bit on the bow of my lips because I don't have much of one, so I want to enhance what I have so maybe it looks like I have a little bit more of a pronounced bow to my lips. I just want to put a little bit more on my cheekbones because that's where I feel like the highlight looks best on me. Okay, and that's the highlighter done. I feel like it looks natural. I, for as like absolutely wild as I am when it comes to like eyeshadow and lipstick, that's how natural I am when it comes to my face makeup. I just feel like it looks best on me that way. And then I'm going to use a blush shade. Finally, I like to do blush last. So that way, if I go a little too intense on the highlighter and it looks a little too stripey on my face, I feel like the blush kind of melds it all together really well. So I'm taking this gigantic brush, which for someone who's afraid of blush, this might look a little big, except this blush is simply so natural that I could just like put it all over my face and it would just give me a perfect little natural flush. I feel like I was very skeptical about this blush. I just do my, pounce it on my cheeks and my nose. Um, I was very skeptical of this blush because it is so pink and like to look at it in the pan, it's not necessarily a color that I normally go for. When it comes to like actually applying it on my face, it looks really natural and like gives a little bit of color to my face without it being too much which is exactly what I go for when it comes to blush. You know, I'm wearing a mask today, so what I wear on my lips doesn't matter, um, but I just wanna wear like a little bit of gloss because I really want the focus to be on the eyes. Uh, but I'm going to take this Fluid Lip Gloss in Mood Ring. I love Fluid, they're so... I'm not a huge gloss person, but their glosses are lovely. And it's just kind of like this milky iridescent shade that I think like enhances the sort of iridescence in the center of the lid. So yeah, that's that's my advent look, y'all. I hope you liked it. I love how this looks, but I love the color purple. I feel like it looks great. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna see more videos from me whenever I get around to filming them. And I will see y'all in my next one. I hope you'll have a wonderful day. Bye.